Well, hi everybody, I'm Mike Bellevue, as hopefully you all know. And, uh, you know, for, for these videos I try to do something a little bit different. Uh, instead of just the pure shoot 'em up stuff. So, a few months ago I did a video and showed you all of my cap and ball revolvers. And I thought today I would show you all of my Colt revolvers. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of Colt revolvers. I don't have the, the best collection in the world, but I've got a few. And they're kind of interesting, and I thought maybe you'd like to see them. So we'll start off with my Colt single action army revolvers. Well, of course, I've got quite a few Italian clones, you know, copies of the Colt single action army, but I am lucky enough to have two genuine Colts. And uh, believe me, there is a difference. So my oldest one is a second generation Colt. And uh, second generation guns were made after World War II. First generation guns were made up until the beginning of World War II and then they stopped making them. They needed the, the capacity to, to make guns for the war effort. But all the Western TV shows in the 1950s and Western movies really brought back the demand for the single action army and, and they, uh, they made a second generation. And I've got to say, the second generation Colts, in my opinion, are probably the best Colts, uh, best sights, best actions and workmanship. Uh, they're just great. I'd love to have a first generation Colt, but I'd also love to have a Rolls Royce and this, <laughs> you know, it's only so much budget. But uh, these aren't cheap, but they're, they're affordable compared to the first generation guns. And they are really, I think, the best shooting Colts. Now, this is my third generation Colt. And it has the black powder frame, which means it has no, no cross pin. It's got, got the screw to hold the cylinder pin in. Uh, these are both 45 caliber guns. The other one was a five and a half inch barrel with stag grips. And this is a seven and a half inch barrel and it has uh, the hard rubber grips, typical Colt grips. And it's got some early touches. It has the uh, the bullseye ejector rod, that sort of thing. Colt will, will make a gun up for you just like this out of their custom shop even now. Uh, this gun, I, I think is less than 10 years old. Uh, I had the custom shop make it specifically for me, and it's an excellent gun. Uh, this gun's been uh, worked over by Tom Sargis, as far as an action job and some, some work on the sights. And it's smooth as silk. And this gun has had some work done by Alan Harton in Houston at uh, Six Gun Specialist. Uh, it had to have a new cylinder fitted for it. When I when I bought it, the cylinder that came with it was totally eroded out from not being properly cleaned. So all my cases were splitting. Um, so I had a second generation cylinder specifically fitted to this gun. So it's not actually a matching serial number part, but uh, I'm happy with it. So those are the single action armies. Well, this is my earliest Colt, <clears throat> and this is a, uh, a Colt New Service, uh, model uh, 1917. This one is actually a civilian model, but these were, these were made in 45 ACP. You can see it's a massive gun loaded with moon clips. And they were made for World War I. But they were made on the very popular new service uh, platform that Colt had. This one has a Tyler T grip on, which, which makes it much more comfortable to, to hold and shoot. With that T grip, this is actually a great shooting gun. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorites. Now, the thing about Colt, and like I showed you, no bullets in it, is uh, they're double action is just as smooth as can be especially on these older guns and you know this one's no exception now I like Smith & Wesson's too and I've got a number of those but uh, 
there's nothing like a good vintage Colt double action. This is another vintage old Colt double action. Uh, this is a Colt official police, and this is uh, a gun that was made in the 1920s. And I picked it up, I'm going to say 1973, in Providence, Rhode Island, of all places. Uh, this is a 38 Special. It was very popular with police from the 30s, really, up, up to the 50s. Uh, good, beautiful. Show you it's empty. It's got beautiful action. It's got the same frame size and grip size as uh, the Colt Python, which is in 357 Magnum. This one's also got a Tyler T grip. I find that these Colt grips, the non target grips, uh, are just not as comfortable if, if I don't have an adapter on them. If I've got an adapter, they feel absolutely great. But this gun is incredibly accurate. I mean, it'll shoot a nickel at 50 yards. Uh, they just don't make them like this anymore. So now it's time to enter the modern era, and by that I mean after I was born. Uh, this gun is the Colt Trooper 357. Not to be confused with the Trooper Mark III. Uh, this is an entirely better gun than the than the Trooper Mark III. Uh, this gun was made in the 1950s. Uh, this is about a 1955 gun, I think. And it was known as the Poor Man's Python. So it's got exactly the same frame as the Python. The uh, it's got the same trigger. The only difference is it doesn't have the wide beaver tail paddle hammer. And we'll just show you that we're empty just so you don't get scared. There we go. It doesn't have the, the wide beaver tail paddle hammer. And it doesn't have the shrouded barrel. The ejector rod just hangs out there. And I, I used to think that was just so incredibly old fashioned looking, you know, back in the 60s and 70s. Who would want a gun like that? But. It has kind of grown on me. This is my best shooting double action revolver. Without a doubt. It's the most accurate, best action. Uh, this gun is just an absolute champ. And it's a joy to shoot. Feels fantastic in your hand. Um, there's nothing bad to say about it. This, this is the best Colt I own. Not the most expensive Colt I own, but it's the best Colt I own. And that brings us to the Colt Snakes. Uh, this is the Diamondback model. It's built on the D frame, so it's a smaller frame than the Python. Uh, let's go back out this way. Smaller frame than the Python, but this one is 38 Special. It was also made in 22 Long Rifle. Uh, but they tried to replicate the Python styling in a smaller, lighter gun. So this has the uh, the big paddle on the hand on the hammer. It's got the target style trigger. It's got the fully shrouded barrel. So you've got the the ramped uh, ventilated rib uh, and the full lug. Right, very neat. It's got a marvelous action, and I'll tell you what, uh, though it's not a 357 Magnum, it's not really a gun I would choose to carry. This is one of my favorite plinking guns. I, I shoot this gun a lot. Uh, it's just just a joy to go shooting steel or shooting paper with with this gun. It's uh, it's much more compact than than the Python, much lighter, but. Uh, very pleasant gun to shoot. And that brings us to my final Colt. And this one is the Python. Uh, I don't have the Cobra or the Anaconda, so I don't have a full line of the snakes. And to be honest with you, I'm not that crazy about the Anaconda. Uh, nice Cobra I might be willing to pick up, but not the new one. Not so crazy about that. Uh, this Python is a six inch barrel. Blued. We'll show you it's empty. 
357 Magnum or 38 Special. The action is incredible. Sights are great. Very, very accurate. Uh, but my beef with it is that it's really heavy. I mean, this fully shrouded barrel, 6 inch, very heavy. Maybe if I had a 4 inch one, it would not be so bad. And it does not balance as well as the unshrouded uh, 357 or Trooper 357. So, I have to be honest, I don't shoot this all that much, but it is a thing of beauty. And uh, I'm very happy to have it. And every now and then I take it out and put some rounds through it. It's a great gun. And this, along with the Colt Single Action, is probably the pinnacle of the gun maker's art at Colt Firearms. Um, when it comes to revolvers, in my opinion, you don't get a gun better made than this. Smiths are good, and I like Smith & Wessons. I have a number of them. But you can't beat this gun and the Trooper 357 uh, when it comes to well-made firearms. So that's my Colt collection. I hope you enjoyed it. And once again, thanks for your support.